And we are live. We're live. We are. And we're going to start off with a quote. This is the quote of this episode because this is this is a big one, you know? Big one. This is the 33rd degree episode. Ooh. Yeah. We have a double confirmation of the three there. The three yep. is repeating itself. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But first, we start with a quote. Here it goes, okay? Are, you, are is everyone sitting down by now? Because Sitting down. Okay, anyway, here we go. Masonry, like all the religions, all the mysteries, hermeticism and alchemy, it conceals its secrets from all but the adepts and sages, or the elect, and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead those who deserve to, me to be misled, to conceal the truth, which it calls light from them and to draw them away from it. Mm, who said that? Wow. By the way, who said that? I think you know Al who said that? Al Alberto Pique. Pique, Mr. Pique. Mr. Albert. Pique, Alberto yeah. Pique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, wow. I mean, that's a that's a long quote. It's a Basically, long quote. Basically, he's saying that they're they're they have secrets that they conceal, and and they use false explanations and misinterpretations to mislead those who deserve to be misled. Yeah, it's a wild okay. quote because Alberto Pique is uh, 33rd degree uh, Freemason. Oh, Freemason. Okay. Uh, Freemason. And so, and yeah. I believe this quote, it could be from Morals and Dogma. I'm not sure, but that's the book that lots of that supposedly Freemasons read when they're getting into it. What's wild about this quote is it's basically like, hey, we're misleading everybody by our images and uh to distract people from what we believe is like the true interpretations of like symbols and the esoteric meanings of things and he's like yeah. oh but all the other religions do the same thing so we're just we're the same but he's also admitting like that we're all about misleading um except for the elect or the the few who, yeah so on and so hmm. forth what if um, that whole statement is misdirection? Can you trust that guy? <laughs> Inception. Inception yeah. misdirection. Meta misdirection for sure. Can can you trust the person who says do not trust? Exactly. <laughs> if we're throwing trust yeah. out the window, it's like, hey man. I mean he was he was indeed interest interested in social architecture. Definitely. Or, yeah. yeah. For sure. But don't worry, that's just a pastime or a hobby. He's just that's just a hobby for no it's other reason. Men's hey, club. <laughs> before we jump into uh, getting further down or breaking down this quote, oh or right, we had this, a little disclaimer. Yeah, well, not a yeah. disclaimer, but uh, we failed. We failed. an announcement, a failure announcement. No, we failed. No. Uh, podcast kind of. Yeah, I I think it's right. pretty much a failure. Last episode. Last yeah. episode was pretty much a failure. It was like a th over three yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's like try to explain why we argument sesh that, that I'm pretty sure we broke every single rule or every single we broke all the rules. Every yeah. single thing that we're trying to focus on in these conversations in these casts. Yes. Um, so what happened? I feel like. We could talk about the the core principle, <laughs> the main rule that was just totally forgotten. Yeah, I well, let me think. I think there's lots. I think uh, like listening was probably really bad. We were trying to find things. Mm -hmm. We were identifying with right. Some, I think that's the like, one. Not we only were saying things like, "But I believe this," and yes. you and you said this, and yes. you said that. Yeah. And not only do I think that I was identifying with certain ideas, but it was like such niche, like such a niche position, like a very, very mm -hmm. niche, obs like very. Like, like the argument didn't really matter for what we were actually talking about anymore. It was just like a position that was very, like, very yeah, specifically nuanced. 
that like it didn't matter it didn't need to be that specifically nuanced and i was like this is the exact right. thing that i'm gonna and identify we, we were with. both trying to figure out who who was right i guess yeah and, and both believing we each one was correct <laughs> it was yeah. correct yeah yeah so um that episode we we decided to put it up um for sure uh for everyone's you know, amusement for everyone's amusement and amazement and uh it happens you know conversations they get get they get uh spiral and they they go down the weeds um yeah. it's pretty funny yeah. that we're like hey this podcast is all about xyz and then we do we completely totally. we completely fail well i mean we're putting putting ourselves out there and not meaning out there in the internet but out there in the conversation space so yes. we're practicing and we're this is practice yeah. yeah i don't yeah and you know that's what i think is uh, a great vision about for this podcast is like hey you know so many people are consuming long-form conversations on the youtube and on the everywhere the tube yes on the etunes mm -hmm. uh, and the podcast and the casts and the everywhere um but we want to encourage people to participate in dialogues like the ones that they enjoy and like people are increasingly mm -hmm. enjoying like uh and so you know we never claim to have perfected this or to have any sort of ex like um expertise that we can be like here's the totally. answers to everything but we're just like mm -hmm. look we're gonna hash things out and we're gonna try to see if we can uh converse in ways that we feel are the um, most advantageous ways to converse and we've kind of yeah. laid out some of those things and uh, as much as we can and as much as we can stay present uh, and uh, conscious and in control uh, then uh, hopefully we can achieve some of that and I think we we have achieved that we do achieve that almost all convos in specific moments right so yeah. we we're we'll always be practicing how to deal with our emotions and our identifications with ideas. Yes. And there's some ideas that we we resonate more with. And so the emotion link is or bond is stronger. Right. Yes. And even yeah. uh, even. Um, yeah. Word choice too, verbal fluency. It's easy to get mm -hmm. lazy in a cast and just start like riffing right and tired like, plus two hours into it yes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah yeah. but it was fun it was fun and i guess this is what we do A apart from surfing uh from wave surfing yeah we are in this practice together and we go through it have some mistakes uh recap on experiences and and learn from that yeah we're big wave surfers in the ocean and in the mind in the psyche in the yeah. psyche um so hey, maybe this yeah uh we have a i was just gonna say just looking back yeah. at this quote here if we're mm -hmm. do you feel good about our kind of recap of our debauchery episode um i guess maybe what I, the only thing i wanted to add is if we in the future go back to that conversation or at least the the core building blocks of it yeah i would like to figure out exactly what triggered the spiral the the conversation getting a little bit out, out of control which i think actually prevented us from exploring the those yeah. ideas deeper we, yeah. I don't know, and 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 we we're gonna revisit them eventually. Yeah. I think if something someone mentions reality or truth or yes. any of those variations, then yeah, yeah, well, we'll run and, into that wall again. Yeah, and also it's easy to start to feel like the floor is crumbling. Lava. <laughs> no, no but sorry. if sorry, you're. Sorry. <laughs> If you're standing on like a secure ground, you're like, there is truth and truth exists and we know truth and, you know, starting to like delve into like what is real and are we just being deceived and all this stuff, it starts to get crazy. You know, a lot of the topics totally. we're in are like, man, 
They, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's if you like, cause I think one of the things we do fairly well in this podcast, and I hope that we can continue to do it is when we're exploring an idea, we just get in there and we take it on as if it's true sometimes, even if it's, yeah. even if it's both just feet a, in. both feet in, even if it's like yeah. a hypothesis and, or like if it's, even if it's stupid or it doesn't matter, it's one of the things we like to do is just explore it as if it's true and have that impact us in the conversation yeah. as if it is, you know, and just explore things. And that can get mm -hmm. uh, crazy sometimes. Um, and we also use the dynamics of both Mr. Answer Guy and Mr. Question Guy. Yes. And, and the, take devil's advocate in some, some instances. Yep. And also uh, bring in the utility of both hands. Totally. Yeah. Um, speaking of truth, like what is up with. So in this quote, he's saying masonry, like all the religions and all the mysteries. Yeah. Hermeticism and alchemy. So he's put religions, mysteries, hermeticism and alchemy together. Together with all of, religions as well. With all the religions. Um, and he's In saying that of all day, of these things yeah. are concealing their secrets. Yeah. I mean. And using false interpretations of symbols. Yes. Also. Yeah. Yeah. And um, man. That's the hard part to decipher i don't know if you know there's different ways we could pick this apart and there's all kinds of different places my mind goes but because mm -hmm. i've spent you know not tons of time but i've spent quite a bit of time looking at alchemical symbolism yeah mostly around the enlightenment period um there's like john d and then chemical wedding and uh the the rise of the Rosicrucian movement right before the foundation of a lot of the scientific institutions that led to the enlightenment and that kind of period. Yeah. 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 And so many symbols in different contexts are interpreted in different ways. And you'll find so many people that are like, this is the me, this is the interpretation of this. And like, actually it means this. Right. And it's like symbol interpretation war, but you know, what, like at the end of the day, and I guess a lot of the al alchemical um, hidden symbols partially were um, like, here's a, here's an emblem and then embedded within it are like see our secrets or codes for people who are trying to make like actual literal gold like for yeah. the alchemists who were like trying to actually make gold, there was like hidden, like that's a part of it. And then there's the, the soul gold aspect of it where it's like, no, you, you are, uh, your spirit and your soul is the thing you're trying to, it's a spiritual transformation to try to make gold. And, and you know, that's Got the, it. the yeah. majority of it and all that kind of a thing. And, uh, but what, in my mind, it's like, what is the thing that's, let's just take it at face value. They're like, oh, we're concealing the secret. It's like, well, what, like, what's, like, what's secret? You know what I mean? Like what, all of a sudden, yeah. some secret interpretation of these symbols and then what, you become superhuman or like you, like, sure. I, don't, I don't know, like, what do you Maybe, mean? yeah. I mean, <laughs> if, yeah. By super, if by superhuman, you mean above average humans, then maybe yes. Because information is indeed powerful. Yeah. It and just so, yeah. seems like so much effort. If there's like all of these institutions are like pushing false symbolic interpretations, like... And it takes so much work and misleading and trying to mislead and like only allowing a select few in on the secrets. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. what is this? Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, what possibly so, could the secrets be? Yeah, yeah, That's, yeah. And why, why, like, why is it such a, like, why not allow everybody to interpret certain symbols the proper way? Like, what is... That's you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I just don't. Well, get it. I don't get I'm, it. I'm, I'm thinking of two different 
and maybe opposing possibilities. If yes. the symbols are pointing to information which makes you capable of doing things you weren't capable of doing before you had the information. By looking at the symbols? Sure. Just by looking at the symbols, you can begin to, to follow a trail. And, and the so symbols kind of are like packing a, information. Like, in let's an say you, in an alchemical you look... Way, like in an alchemical way, like you can in, embody the symbols and incorporate them into your journey to mm -hmm. uh, elevate your whatever um, in, an, in a Gnostic sense from a human animal sense and like elevate your consciousness or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I just don't see how someone's like, no, the bird actually represents this. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I've got the secrets. And then you like elevate or you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We yeah. told everybody that the bird is uh, is the spirit because it's a it's flying between the the earth and the heavens and that birds <laughs> represent the spirit because it's halfway. And that that the reason why there's doves in religious symbolism and why birds are always used is because they've made it halfway. And that's that's a way to visualize the elevation from earth to heaven. Uh, yeah. We told everybody that, but actually it means this. And then you're like, I've got the secrets. I am now a 33rd degree Freemason and I have omniscient power. Like, yeah, what? Yeah. I don't understand that. I guess also symbols are specific to their culture. So can we say context? I wanted to say context, but I don't I think it's <laughs> more like culture, but it, both, I guess both. The, if you change culture, you're also changing context, right? So mm -hmm. uh, a, a, the same image might have a different different interpretation in different cultures or in the context, like even within like in pre enlightenment period alchemy, like Mercury could be could mean Hermes or it could mean the planet Mercury or it could mean yeah. actual Mercury or it could mean mm -hmm. all of them or it could mean depending on the context in the, within the same like, quote unquote culture, I guess, which is just why I was mentioning context because totally. Um, and that's why it's confusing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, like the moon in some mythological circumstances is associated with, uh, like maleness in the majority. It's the, it's sun is male, moon is female. And I don't, yeah. you know, just in terms of a symbolic interpretation, but there's some totally. the other way around in a cultural sense. Um, okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So what, ha what happens if the other one, the less popular interpretation, dates way back in time compared to the other one? So... But it's is, about is there a validity it's, about... It's not the time. It's not time the time. Frames? It's about the reason. And yeah, the reason so too, and the yeah. reason applies no matter what time frame. One's not right or wrong. It's just mm -hmm. if you have a nice. if you have a framework nice. where this means this and it's related to the other things, then it's a coherent uh, symbolic kind of dictionary. But it yeah. could be different from a different one, and that would be um, the context that you're talking about. I think a good example of this is uh, moon worship versus sun worship. Um, and just while I was on the topic of those two uh, celestial entities, um, yeah. totally, there was a uh, the reason which I find or a explanation for the different for um, why they emerged in places they emerged is thinking about hemispheres. And if you are in the northern hemisphere and you're experiencing seasons, then it's the sun that you see have this grand uh journey to the underworld every year and dictating so much of seeming to dictate so much of the of of uh everything around you the vegetation and, and all kinds of stuff but if you're say right on the equator then the sun is in the same place the whole year yeah. so for them the moon was the thing that changes in the sky over time a lot more and so then that becomes 
the thing that seems to be hmm. doing this its own really thing fun. and have a mythology yeah. and have a, a story around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. and to me that blew my mind because that, you know, makes total sense and, and things seem to blow my mind fairly easily. So a combination of those two sure. things. This just made me think, I mean, this, this could take me into many directions, but I yeah. don't want to miss what I, what just came into my consciousness, which is, do you want to say um, this and then say the directions? I'll let, I'll let you try to get. Yeah. Them out. Yeah. Okay. I'll try. Okay. If I don't, uh, forget anyway, let's say symbols are drawings, pictures, images, um, and maybe an, mm, a drawing, for example, would you say a drawing of the solar system is a symbol for the, for the actual reality of the solar system? Like it's an image that is pointing at how things work, right? Yeah, I think a little bit. It could be you could say it's a symbol, like an, a, an image of of yeah, the I, solar I system. I believe that there's like a communications, not theory, but way of talking about symbols is called semiotics. And yeah. um, but I think it's just like any kind of a thing can have a meaning that's put onto it. Um, I shouldn't have said semiotics because now I'm not. I'm like any forget that. That's but, a bigger umbrella. But but symbols, I think, isn't just drawings. I think it's like if you're talking about something within a culture and you're bringing it up a lot, it could become a symbol for something, regardless of whether or not people are drawing it or putting pictures on it. Got it. Yeah. Um, a model. It's kind of like maybe. a, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it's like... Um, or a it's like metaphors and uh, and similes or symbols mm. are like. I'm thinking uh, of maps, cartography. Is that a symbol for terrain, for example? Yeah, I think. So so when, okay, when let's it, let's yeah. roll with this. Let's roll. Yeah. Let's roll with this so okay. that I can finish my point. Sure. Yeah. I was thinking before we knew that the Earth was the center of the galaxy. We everyone believed. Earth is not we, the center of the galaxy. <laughs> the other way around. No, no, no. <laughs> Apologies of the solar system. Mm -hmm. The sun is the center of the solar system. The sun is the center. But before <laughs> yeah. before Mr. Galileo Galilei yes. figured that out, Double G. everyone believed the earth was the center, right? Yes. Because, because everyone saw the sun as static, for example. And so, no, what I'm saying, the other way around. The other way no, around. Forget that. Yeah. The anyway. sun's moving around the earth. It looks yes, like. It looks like. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. So yeah. when Galileo said, hey, I, guys, I think G. you're wrong about what you believe about reality. I, I'm pretty sure we're moving and the earth is, is not. And, and almost the everyone sun. was in the sun. Jeez, I need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm trying yeah. to imagine what happened when he said that the backlash that he must have received um, because everyone was like, dude, we can actually see the of sun course. and like you're, you're telling me something that goes against my senses, what my senses are telling me. Yeah. And so I guess maybe that links to the previous uh, conversation about the color on the card or whatever mm -hmm. and how, but Here's the link, okay? Okay. So because this is going somewhere. He drew the new model or the new map or the solar system and he started showing it and explaining the meaning in it and explaining why the drawing looks that way and the information and the findings behind it that started to become, I guess, the new science. But linking it to and so that that gave everyone a lot of power. It's new information that allowed a lot of new research to be made. It's a new model that allows us mm -hmm. to understand reality in a whole new way and, and take that finding and then go deeper into it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, to, now linking it to those who deserve to be misled and the 
Masons um, basically, or any, let, let's maybe not even talk about the Masons, anyone who could think that a symbol or information inside a symbol could be used in a in a in the wrong way or or mm -hmm. so for example if you think about the the solar system it, in a way in the same way an atom an atom has a system and hear me out if you figure out that with the atomic system you can create nuclear power then you have in your hands a huge weapon the 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 biggest weapon right and it all comes from maybe looking at the at the complexity or the or a, or a 2d drawing of atomic structure you maybe that could lead to 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 more information and going deeper into that structure that map and finding something like nuclear power and nuclear power could be used to el eliminate an entire country or provide energy to our entire country it could be used both ways it could be harnessed positively and so if let's say someone in a very advanced position in society has this knowledge they might be like hey we need to disinform the public about atomic structure because if this reaches the, the public is not ready for this sort of technology and we could basically just destroy each other and i guess that's it and that's my argument for maybe sometimes um misleading about symbols because something like beware of of unearned wisdom or something like you're not ready for this information yeah okay there's a lot there yes i just want to unpack it a little bit i'm just bit. glad i, I was able to things, formulate i think that, yeah. part of what you're talking about is just the ability for illustration and for models and for drawing ideas that those things help get across a point or help you develop ideas but I don't think that those images themselves are the catalyst for some kind of knowledge acquisition. I think that people have to understand mm -hmm. the idea and then they can use those images to uh, clarify their thought process. But I don't think that like hiding an image from people, if they saw the image, all of a sudden they would understand atomic science. I don't think that's how I think. The images mm. help illustrate something. Maybe both. Maybe maybe someone sees an image, the image triggers an idea, and then you start going into that idea. Yeah, images are very yeah. powerful tools, I think. But where I guess I would kind of... Mm -hmm. And this is me identifying with the idea, but I think that the idea is first. And, and the symbol is a way of containing lots of ideas. Um, that's the power of that, yes. what, what is, um, like the, I, the, I the, identified where you're with your identification and agree, personally agree ooh, with the idea. <laughs> nice. The idea, like, uh, what's that guy's name? John Anthony West, his, his like Egypt, um, serpent in the sky and his like breakdown ooh. of the way that the, that most people who interpret the, um, sort of way of thinking that could have been prevalent within ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. And he kind of breaks down the idea of like a, I believe, totems? Uh, no, not totems. Uh, now I've even set this up and I failed to have the word. <laughs> but it's like, it's like having, totems. having sort of, it's like a different word for not symbols, but it's like kind of symbols. It's like embedding mm. this mass amounts of um i just thought of a meme ideas does into that help a meme symbols and one of the ideas that uh was brought out was that um or that he brings up is that perhaps certain temples and structures that we have uncovered archaeological sites were laid out basically to run a program and so if you knew how to interpret the symbols and you knew kind of what the ideas were behind the symbols, you would start at the entrance. And as you walked through, 
you're basically running a program that is like way more has way more data than if it was just writing or if it was a book mm -hmm. or even audio because yeah. if you understand the language of the images where they embed so much information and ideas and conception and mythological concepts within the symbols these small um drawings or whatever yeah. carvings or whatever they they would be then uh you yeah your mind is just running a program and you're downloading this insane process as you walk through mm -hmm. um I, I love that metaphor and i think yeah that's what happens yeah because these thing contains all that information which is which is amazing that even that that exists and maybe like is that a discovery is that an invention but just the fact that we can transfer information mm -hmm. embedded in 2d images i think it's like if you if you think about it and you think about its potential It's like a next level communication tool. It's like better than books because sure. you don't need to yeah. read seven pages that contains with it, within it an idea that's expressed from an author that has limitations on how fast mm -hmm. they can give you concepts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you understand how to read the symbolism, it's instantaneous. You look at yeah. something and yeah. it's... It's immediately the whole concept is understood. Um, and I think you are like you are mm -hmm. right that images like, say, a drawing of the solar system would be super profound to look at and just consider yourself within that framework and the expansiveness that that opens up your way of thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this just made me think of the movie Arrival. Denny Villeneuve. Have you seen that movie? Yes, yeah. Arrival. I, I saw that for a second time like a week ago. Mm -hmm. If I can just try to take 30 seconds to summarize what it's about, because I think... Yeah, the communication it's, in it. Yeah, this uh, like, language expert totally. is, is, uh, is hired by the U.S. Army to talk with the aliens, which just yeah. made first contact, right? Yeah. And um, she starts to discover their language, which is basically what, basically what they are here to do, to gift yeah. us their language. And as she learns their language, she starts to get both flashbacks and flash forwards about her life. So, so because their language is not bound by time. It's like, like these weird symbols around a circle. Yeah. And then, um, Basically, she understands that when, when everyone learns their language, everyone's perception of reality shifts. Yeah. By, like as you said, upgrading their model of, of, of symbolism. Mm -hmm. I, it's just fascinating. Yeah, to totally. And I, yeah. that's the thing with um, this idea of, oh, there, people are misled um, by the symbols. I think maybe maybe it doesn't matter what the quote unquote correct interpretation of the symbols are, but it has to do with the cohesiveness and the understanding how everything fits within a larger, um, within a larger picture. So it, so mm -hmm. let's say, let's say that you invent a new understand, like a new description or a new definition for all the symbols and you could you could get all these alch alchemical emblems and look at them all and you could make your own if it's extensive and cohesive and has a point then there would be a massive benefit let's this is let's just suppose all this stuff you can come with me on my <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if you made a, a cohesive um interpretation definition of all these things then you could say that would be super beneficial to someone or more beneficial, let's just say, to understanding all those pieces and having them all fit within each other and being it, maybe you could then do something with them. But if, if mm -hmm. there's, if there's, if you are taking an interpretation uh, from this school of thought and this school of thought and this school of thought, then, ev then it's so not cohesive and mixed and confused that you can't do, quote unquote, do anything 
with the symbols because it's just nothing works together in a way that actually makes uh, um, a function. It's like if it, the Egyptian temple metaphor, let's imagine like you took the first five meters of one temple and then the next five meters from another one, it's just like you, you, you're going to get, conf it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so let's imagine that, okay, that let's imagine that Mr. Uh, Alberto Pique has the <laughs> passed down secret interpretations of symbols and symbol base and in the in the hierarchical top of Masonic order and that there's this big cohesive understanding of symbols and they have the quote unquote correct ones or whatever. Yeah. Then you could say maybe that it's not the quote unquote correct one, but maybe it would be true that if you had such a cohesive overview and an understanding of it all, then that is true in a sense, because it would be a lot more beneficial than if you were getting these scattered interpretations. Um, well, what is truth? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm but totally I vibing with what you're saying. Yeah. I still don't understand what it's going to do for you. I mean, I get the, the, I don't know. I get the, the possible potential of the download of info, but then, you know, what is the end goal? How are you, what's the point of the info? Cause I don't think it's, I mean, I think I, mean, it, I could think of a couple of ideas that would, that really kind of make sense that if it's the case that Mr. PK and friends have, yeah, uh, the the understanding that everyone's missing, right? Yeah, the hidden um, mysteries, the hidden knowledge. Yeah. If that were disclosed, it would ha it would cause massive paradigm shift, uh, like massive cognitive dissonance. So maybe. But explain how that could happen, because I'm I don't I don't know if okay, that's I don't okay. know if that's true. I, I just that's where I'm kind of. Hypothetically speaking, if yeah. the new understanding is is uh big enough is not it's not just a minor thing in which, what way though um in the way that it is it will destroy certain beliefs about reality and society that everyone just assumes and and i guess maybe take for granted but it would just be a, I mean, it would just be a perspe perspective, right? It's like, in if, my if, mind, how is they... that different than like, uh, like Buddhist revelations? And if everybody absorbed these, rev first of all, not everybody would absorb them. They would just like, they would be out there. And then maybe some people would be like, no, you got to believe or use this interpretive structure mm. because it's But so may maybe let, let's, it's let's get the stakes higher. If these guys knew for uh, thousands of years, yeah. I guess maybe not 5,000 <laughs> years, of course. But like, well, I think I, I believe know. the I, and correct me. I don't know. I, I have to look. But I think the, the mythology within the Masons is that they're they're a line of secret society that goes back to like like the Egyptian rites and pre-Egyptian um, mm -hmm. the initiation of the pyramid and their direct descendants of, of, of ph philosophical societal hierarchy groups that have been around for mm -hmm. thousands of years. So that, that's their, and they, they get into lost civilizations and right. I mean, trying to trace back knowledge as, as back as it can be traced. I don't know how much they're into that. I haven't looked, I don't know, but definitely <laughs> yes. like, definitely like Egypt and, um, like Hermes was a real guy sometime. I, th I think maybe is part of the mm -hmm. beliefs, but also it's okay. I, information on this is squirrely, is squirrely at best. Oh, yeah. gee. Um, okay. But if we, if we make the stakes higher by yeah. providing a hypothesis scenario, which is these guys have known for thousands of years that we're not alone in the universe. And there's maybe different alien species and galactic institutions even. And some of them have been with us for a long time. Yeah. And 
if that or info about death and, and the or exactly the mm-hmm. something that's like high high stakes people would wouldn't be able to take in that information from let's say yeah. five zero to five percent to ninety percent disclosure would have to be like small drops of info in a long period of time so that we don't go through major mayhem like worldwide chaos yeah but that would be that would be a different kind of assertion that would be like we have within the masons information that people are not ready for but instead it's like no we're just misleading people to the interpretations of symbols it's like those are in my Mm. mind those are different different Mm -hmm. i don't think you're Mm -hmm. gonna like read or look at symbols or structures and what they represent. And then all of a sudden you'll be like, Oh, that means that we're not alone in the universe and that soul, like whatever. I think you're just like, maybe when he, when he wrote symbols, he wanted to say basically a language overall, even like ideas, because we construct ideas from symbols. So yeah, maybe he's meaning not just a 2d image, but the whole thing. When I think of symbols within the Masonic concept, I think of alchemical symbolism, like the arch in Masonic buildings and totally. and the the two pillars and uh, yeah, checkerboard. Yeah, the architect's tools and, and the checkerboard. And the, the grand architect of the universe and geometry. And the G the, and the what seven. What the symbols represent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think he's, talk, I don't think he's talking about la- language. I think, mm-hmm. well unless you consider that a type of language, which you could, but I don't think he's talking about words. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. It's hard to, it's hard to, to figure out all these. Uh, yeah. I don't, my, yeah. I just get confused about what information could be. So like an interpretation of symbols, how, why would you, what would benefit from just like misleading? Mm-hmm. I mean, in my mind, if I just think of like, like rationally, if it's, if I just go rational, I think that the kind of Hermes and these esoteric concepts were born out of like Neoplatonistic ways of thinking. And they were, they, they emerged around then. And, um, that these ideas were a way of communicating like metaphysical concepts that used to be kind of locked down by schools of thought and that this was a way of opening it up to kind of be free of a specific religious way of thinking and they were just like here's metaphysical concepts of the soul and spirit but we don't have to have it within a religious context and that that was persecuted heavily by the church and by other groups that were like, no, these are like paganistic thoughts and 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 they were targeted heavily. And that led these groups to go underground and become yeah. uh, more secretive and that and that they were that was formation of early groups that eventually maybe evolved yeah. from that time frame into groups like the Rosicrucians and uh, the mm-hmm. Masons and stuff like that. But yeah, but even that, even but mm-hmm. that basically they're just metaphysical playgrounds. And it, it's just if you think that your symbolic construction is true or whatever, then you're just the same as someone working within another metaphysical framework. And it's not like there's and and then and then for you to say like, oh, we're misleading people based so they can't interpret our symbols like we do. It's like, well, maybe people won't don't think that the way you interpret the symbols are like important or the truth or like, yeah, you're just saying like our way of thinking is is so good that that, and we're going to keep it secret because we think it's so important. It's like, all right, bud, like. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like no one, no one was asking for you to explain your symbols to <laughs> yeah, humanity. Yeah, it's like yeah, you're. It's just kind of like. Hey, medi- that's your thing. That's your thing. Yeah. But. I guess, 
the what if or the curiosity about like why why would you say this and if you're actually doing what you're saying you're doing if you're actually doing that yeah then i'm even more intrigued but also and i guess this is the, I, the last thing i'll say it because this is a like i'm super interested in in alchemy and yeah. i think it's because i do believe that there's power within a cohesive understanding of a symbolic framework and i do mm -hmm. think that the idea of directing um the work of alchemy towards personal growth and mm -hmm. um whatever that's the best way to direct energy and that i do think that there i mean the fact that it's played such a massive role in something like the enlightenment has is just so fascinating to me and the idea that perhaps for a massive outpouring of creative and uh interesting ideas from a population the perfect recipe is one like alchemical symbolic uh work and and in interpreting symbols in this way and in expanding the concepts of what's driving your impulse to create ideas is not just this materialistic objective pursuit of knowledge but this expansive almost religious metaphysical yes. important thing where it it's this grander like this grander massive opening up of yeah it's purpose, not just collecting you know? ideas collecting knowledge yeah. so that your knowledge collection gets bigger over time yes I mean, it's yeah. and that's and and Sorry, I've been ranting, but and that's the that's the uh, that brings in the idea of even if this isn't true or even if this is all made up, what does it actually do? And if it actually does propel and catalyze innovation and sense of meaning and of personal growth, it's like who ca who cares if it's a made up metaphysical um, symbolic framework? Who cares? It's, it's like killing it. Everybody's thriving, you know, like, mm -hmm. so, yeah. So maybe that that's real and that's extremely powerful and alchemy has been concealed so yeah. that it's not available for everyone to, to, you know, in, in have fast periods of growth or, or, or development. Yeah, I mean, maybe, and, maybe it's and, a speed thing. It's a matter of, like people are doing very small uh, advancements on both uh, personal development and consciousness and knowledge as well. And yeah, and what their experience of objective objective reality is. But if these symbols and basically alchemical information, let's say, were widely available maybe the speed of development could be faster uh, or or maturity maybe something related to to being able to become mm -hmm. um to mature faster um, and meaning psychologically I think, and emotionally I, I think that the symbols are, are out there i don't think they're i really don't think they're hidden i think you can find um, I think you can choose a time frame and then you can, or, a, or like you said, a cultural worldview, and then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can find the interpretation of the symbols, like the whole school. But you need to find them. You need to find them yourself. They're not being taught in school. Mostly they're no, not being right. talked about right. in mainstream media as this symbol. We should yeah. talk, talk about what it means. So I, I think the, yeah. I think the limitation or the the uh, impetus is on the uh, magnifying of the importance of 
an approach like this and having people be like, oh, it's actually worth it. And then having institutions mm -hmm. consider the idea that maybe there's a larger perspective way of catalyzing growth and that it could be in part mm -hmm. by using symbolic structures like this. And maybe that's the maybe that's the kept secret. It's not the actual symbols and the interpretation because those are out there. You can read, you know, endless books about people trying to tell you what the interpretation are. And I yeah. think in general, yeah. they're very similar. I don't think there's any that are so drastically different. Like, you know, so, but, you, but would you, you agree could, that you sorry. could read Manly P. Hall and get a pretty yeah. good understanding of that. But, you know, and then you, you could also say like, oh, well, he was, uh, you know, a, a high up Freemason and sure. It's just, I don't know, yeah. but I think the symbols but are I guess out that's, there that's and maybe an the entry importance book, of it is right? what is, is what is kept within these groups is like they're, they're living out this way of life within their, uh, groups and that the secret is the living out of these interpretations and of mm -hmm, bringing mm -hmm. them into sort of a process. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that even with something like the secret teachings of all ages, yeah, which is, I mean, Manly P. Hall is maybe one of the most popular or entry mm -hmm. um, into symbology. Uh, but still, I, I think about it. I'm pretty sure he wrote that when he was 21, too. It's crazy. Wow, I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But it's still related to, I mean, it's in the title, like the secret teachings. It's related yeah. to the quote unquote occult. But totally. what I'm trying to say is maybe the fact that the, occult, the information in the occult um, or what we call the, the occultism or um, yeah. esotericism, yeah. right? Maybe it's better that way. Maybe it's better that you have to kind of decide to go into the underworld to like risk a little bit of looking into the shadows so that you when you fi do find the information, yeah. it's more valuable than it's someone fed it to you. You didn't you weren't even aware that it was being fed to you. Yeah, I see that. It's like I mean, that's a Hermes quote where someone's like the mouth of wisdom is there for the ear that's mm -hmm. ready to listen or something like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, uh, yeah, man. Um, that's, a, I think that's about it for the time. For time I think I that's um, it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I could, I could riff on, on this topic for quite a while. I think there's a lot of, it's a hard, it's one of the topics that's hard to, um, organize ideas around and to clarify, like, a, a way of thinking about it because it's um there's so many like rabbit holes and and different ways of considering the information and uh, yeah. sources and and all that stuff and but i i i am fascinated uh, by it so i'm happy to continue that same same even though we've talked about language and symbols before yeah it feels like almost an hour just went by and mm -hmm. that was fast. So yes, intriguing sir. convos. And I think we uh, did better this week than last week. So I, th I, th I think I was much better at <laughs> listening for sure. I think we, we did better this week. <laughs> um, thanks for the con right. convo, man. And we'll see Likewise. you on uh, 34. 34. All right. Peace out. Peace.